There you go. Mic test, one, two, three. Should be working now, right? So let's check our participants. Could you please give me an exclamation mark if you can hear me loud and clear? And then we're also going to check our folks on TikTok because I haven't yet hit the live button. Um, there you go. Should work now. Okay. Shall we do an attendance check? I'm so excited for tonight's topic. Uh, this is right up my alley. It's what I do for a living. And I wanted to talk about this because I just realized that we've never talked about it. I think we've, you know, from time to time, talk about it, but we've never made it as the hero of the night's conversation. So we're going to talk about that. Tonight's topic is going to be about what do you do if you're running out of motivation for work? Okay. So we're going to talk about probably you're just sick and tired of what you're doing. You have conflicts with your manager or with your colleagues, and you feel like it's just not enough for you to feel motivated to wake up in the morning, spend an hour or two to go to the office, or even hit the on button for Zoom, right? So we're going to talk about that. As usual, we'll be entertaining any of your questions that may involve, for example, any career-related questions. It could be having conflicts with your colleagues. I don't want to sound like it's all about conflicts, by the way. But anyway, conflicts with your colleagues, with your boss. Oh, okay, here's one. I've been getting this question lately. What do you do if you have signed on to a new job and then you get a counter offer from your previous company? Or you've signed on to this new job and then another offer comes along, but the offer after you've just signed on in just two weeks is way better than the most recent one. Is it okay? Is it illegal to rescind the past offer and move to another offer? Okay, we'll talk about that. Could you please type in the chat box, by the way, which city, which province, uh, which country are you guys coming from? It will be great to see that from our participants. I would love to see that in the comments section. Kairunisa from LinkedIn says, love the topic. Thank you. My favorite topic, by the way. Uh, Charlene from LinkedIn also says, very timely for me. I'm happy that you guys find our topic for tonight timely. Okay. So we have folks from Pasig from Ortiga Center. Thank you. How about the rest? I would love to see our other participants. Folks on TikTok, could you please let me know which part of the world are you guys coming from? Watching from Canada, from Muntinlupa, from Paranaque says Andeng. Thank you for joining us tonight. Kenneth. Wow, Kenneth, you already have a question. Huh? Kenneth says, can you please share your thoughts about servant leadership? Servant leadership for me is the highest form of leadership. It's the mindset we're in. You are, as a leader, not, uh, as a leader, you are an enabler. You're a vessel. You're someone who allows people to get things done. You see yourself as allowing those who are in charge to become faster, better, and stronger, rather than seeing yourself as the one who's in charge. Okay? Those two things are different. George is watching from Davao. Thank you. Antonio is from Laguna. Yawar is from Kashmir. Thank you for joining us. Ted is watching from Alberta, Canada. Good morning also to you from that time zone. Patricia's from the gig. Nazri's from, uh, Nazri says, really love the topic. I really need it right now, especially after a long holiday break. I can relate to that. If you've been from your office or work for a while, it's hard to wake up and say, I need to go back to the office again. So we'll talk about that later on. Alexandra is watching from Romania. Patrick's watching from Makati. Uh, Amira says, same also. Okay. Nathan says hello from Legaspi Albay. Daniel's from Cobao. June is watching from Tondo, Manila. I grew up in Tondo until the age of 18 years old, by the way. Okay. 
uh, postponed my workout later na lang. <laughs> um, did you postpone just because you want to watch our session, by the way? Uh, the name is letter R. You can actually watch, I think, our session while you're having your workout. From Mandalu, yung says, AG nothing. Okay, team, we're going to give away also prizes in the middle of the session. So please stay tuned for that. We're going to give away uh, free tickets for our upcoming workshop at the SMX Convention Center. These are workshops about public speaking, business writing. Also, we are opening the registration for our motivational for one night only talk. Also happening on June 24. Please stay tuned for that. I'm going to give away 10 tickets also from our participants. Amira says hello from Malaysia. Thank you. Justin from LinkedIn says huge fan. Jonathan, thank you for the kind words. Uh, Cup of Tea says hello from Rizal. Okay, Richard's also from Qatar. Good afternoon. Uh, is it good afternoon? Minus four. It's, I think it's five o'clock in the afternoon in Qatar right now. Okay. I am Juana says watching from the bus going to Cavite. It seems like you just came from work. Okay. Gladiators and suits, let's start this session now. I would love you to please type in your chat box questions involving motivation. Okay. While people are typing their questions, I'm going to make a quick disclaimer, a quick clarification here, because I think a lot of people confuse the difference between motivation and inspiration. Can I get an exclamation mark if you sometimes confuse the two? Yes, they are somehow synonymous. Some people interchange them and you can, you know, it's not like someone's going to put you into prison if you make those two uh, similarities. But the key difference here with motivation and inspiration is that motivation is external. Inspiration is within. So to give you an example, when I say motivation is, ex is external, it is something that can be artificially done or executed. So for example, I can be motivated to go to the gym or not to the gym. I'll be motivated to run and exercise if I buy equipment right inside my apartment. Because if I see it and the more I see it, the more I am reminded to do it. So you see how that's external. However, inspiration is something that's within. Not everyone is intrinsically inspired to have a healthy body. Some people for the rest of their lives are totally okay to not have the fittest body as long as they are healthy. See, see what, what's the difference there? Another example of uh, being intrinsic is you can be motivated, let's say, for example, by money, and you will be more motivated to be to move to have more money because let's say you want to build a new house or you want to save up for a trip. So if you happen to be an entrepreneur, you'll find a way to sell more of your products and services. If you are an employee and in the future, you want to be able to build a family, you'll be more motivated that in one year's time, you have to get promoted so that you can increase your salary. So that motivation is external. However, being inspired to do well in your job some people just don't get inspired because of money, because they just don't care with money, or they just have enough money already. What rather inspires them is because they were raised, for example, by a family wherein you have to love what you do. Or let's say you were raised by a family of an artist, a group of artists. You're more inspired, not you're more inspired to get a job that doesn't involve money, but involves the things that you want to do. See the difference, okay? Also, exter um, motivation is rather short-term. Inspiration is long-term. I can be motivated today or the next two weeks to not eat as much, okay? Because I want to look good for my upcoming video shoot. But after that, my motivation is gone, okay? So it's short-term. Inspiration, however, is long-term. I am forever inspired of my country, that if my country is able to progress better transportation, better education system, no matter what happens in my life, it's still a vision that I want to hold on to. So whenever I see a Filipino doing so well in the global stage, I get inspired. You see how that is a long-term thing as well. Okay, You get inspired by people 
but you don't get motivated at the same time. Inspiration is long term. Inspiration is it's within you. It's caused by your personality, by how you were raised, by your environment, by your family. Motivated motivation can change from time to time. Okay? It doesn't have anything to do with who you are all the time. Okay? No matter how good looking, ugly, big or small you are, most people are going to be motivated by money for a short amount of time because they need to pay the bills. See what I did there? Okay? Um, Jason, okay. Here's a good question now. Jason is there for asking, how will you explain the phrase, nakaka-inspire ka naman? You're so inspiring. How did that become internal? Okay. So do not look at external as if it has to be a person outside you. When you are inspired by someone, it's because there's something within you that was ignited or was affected. Okay? Which is why not everyone is going to be inspired by the same person. I am inspired by Dr. Angela Duckworth, who is the proponent of grit. I am not inspired by... I need to choose a certain celebrity. Uh, can you please name me a celebrity that likely I may not like? Um, or I'll give an example. Let's talk about anime because I'm a big fan of anime. I am inspired by the characters of Demon Slayer because they're all about grit and they're all about persistence in times of adversity. I am not inspired all the time by Ghost Fighter. And that's because Ghost Fighter, I think, is just all about fighting and it doesn't give me the chills about... Uh, tenacity or overcoming obstacles. They do, but it's not realistic. Okay? Or you get what I mean? So, and that's because there's something about me that is get, that is triggered by that. Okay? So you may have your different tastes versus mine. That's because we are all unique as individuals. That's inspiration. Okay? But can we be bo both motivated by excitement of watching anime because anime is just Damn good. Yes. Okay. I'm going to park that now because I want to ask more questions from you guys. I want to read more questions involving what do you do now when you're running out of motivation? Okay. Is that okay? So let's... I had people are asking. People are typing in the, in the chat box on TikTok. Meryl Streep, Drew Barrymore. No, I think they're actually inspiring people. I am not inspired so much by action stars. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not inspired, let's say, by Dwayne Johnson. Maybe because I don't know him well. Or maybe because I'm just not a big fan of his films. I just don't think that it's about... It is about adversity, but it's about being tough and being macho. It's not about mental rigidity, for example. Okay? So let's answer some questions now. And this time, let's make it more practical. Okay, uh, trying to look at questions that are almost the same with each other so I can hit two things at the same time. Okay, Ulap from TikTok asks, how can you motivate your team if you yourself as a team leader is losing motivation? First of all, it's very good that you have acknowledged this because if you have a leader who isn't themselves uh, motivated. That comes across, that is felt by your people. It is also mirrored as an affection by your people. And it, because you are a role model, people start feeling that, okay, if my boss isn't even committed to accomplish this project because he's not motivated enough, what more in my case? Okay. So two things. One of my favorite answers when someone asks me I'm running out of motivation is that I challenge that statement. And I tell them, I don't think you're running out of motivation. I think what you're doing is that you have a tendency to put your motivation only in one basket. What do I mean? So I think a lot of you had that question, what do I do if I run out? You see the choice of word run out of motivation? Okay, Run out assumes that the source will just at some point be emptied, which is not true you will always have an infinite amount of reasons to feel that you have to push. So the only way for you to have an infinite source or at least a sufficient amount of source is to make sure that your motivation is not just anchored to one person or one thing in your life. 
Why is that? Because the moment that one person or thing goes away in your life, is taken away from you, it's going to be hard to bounce back. You will start thinking that there is no more reason to live. There is no more reason to be happy. There's no more reason to keep on pushing. Can I get the letter A as in amen? If you can relate to that. So my biggest recommendation, my best recommendation is to be motivated, regardless if you are a manager, a parent, a sibling, etc., is to put your motivations in different baskets and be conscious in identifying what those baskets are. Okay? By the way, can I just do an audio check? Can I get an exclamation mark if you guys are hearing me loud and clear? PLDT, by the way, has an issue these days and today. So I'm using my globe connection. Good thing I have two uh, internet providers in my home. Okay, it's doing well. Okay, let me go back. I'm going to repeat. If you feel that you're running out of motivation, please look at how you distribute your motivations in different baskets. Do not put your motivation to only one person or thing. When I say person, it could be a lover. It could be your family as a whole. When I say thing, it could be your job. It could be a hobby. It could be a TV show. And I think a lot of us become so intense in our lives. We start thinking, John, all that I have in my life is my family. They're the reason why I am X, Y, and Z. And I get it. Sure. You can pour your love. You can pour all of your motivation. But please do not forget that you also have a life to live. So when I say that you have to put your motivations into different baskets, consider, and you can put this into a journal. You can write this down tonight if I can give you that as an assignment. List down top five baskets that you think motivate you the most. So my baskets would be my friends and loved ones. My second would be my career. My third would be my travels because I just love traveling. I think it's one of the reasons if life is so is just so random and meaningless, the one thing that I think will make me happy is traveling. So that's my third one. Fourth will be the arts. I love cooking. I love drawing and painting. I love uh, politics, which I will put under the bucket of arts. And that includes debating about certain topics in life. And fifth would be, I think, sports. I love playing tennis. I love playing mostly racket sports like badminton. I love running. Uh, I love trekking as long as it's not too steep. right? So all of these five things, every time my career is not doing well, and sometimes it doesn't, you know? For, as an entrepreneur, there are months wherein business does well. There are months that you have to chase more revenues. When I feel down, I do not define that my failure is only because of this bucket, this basket. I will tell to myself, sure, I may not be doing well in this department tonight or this month, but I am not going to define myself just because of this. I am also someone who has traveled to many, many countries. And that makes me so proud of myself. I have my friends and loved ones who, no matter how I have failed, are going to be there for me. Okay? Can I get an exclamation mark if you get to appreciate how I put all of my motivations in different baskets such that if one of them does not do well, I have other baskets to lean on to. And this is why when someone tells me that I'm running out of motivation, my answer to them is, nope, you're not running out of mo your mot motivation. What you have is that your motivation is only placed in one basket. You need to diversify that. Put it into different baskets. You know, this is no different to the investment strategy. When you have, let's say, $100 million, you don't put all of your money in a savings account. Yes? Can I get the letter S? You don't. What do you do with your $100 million? You put it into other investments. You put it into equities, money market, stock market. You put some into property. You get an insurance. You try to hedge so that if one of the instruments do not perform well, you get to manage the losses through other gains. I think motivation is the same thing. So can I just push that again tonight? May I please challenge all our gladiators in suits listening. List down the top five or top seven things that motivate you and tell yourself that you are more than just one source of motivation. 
Okay? I am strongly disappointed whenever, you know, whenever I go to parties, I haven't been to a club for quite a while now. I'm, I think I've come to an age where when I'm so over that phase, I think I've, I've been to a club last month. But I'm no longer the same guy who does like every two weeks, probably once every quarter or once every two months. But my point here is whenever I go to a club or a party and I shake my hands with someone, I get disappointed when my default mindset is to tell others, hi, my name is Jonathan and I am X, Y, and Z. And most of the time when we answer this question, we talk about our job. We talk about our livelihood. Can I get an exclamation mark if you can relate to that? Yes? Why do I disagree that you have to define yourself immediately as your source of living? So people say, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor. I disagree that you should introduce yourself as such. Why? You're implying that your worth and value as a person is determined by how much money you make and by your job. Can I get another exclamation mark if you can relate to that? Yes? I hate that. Of course, it's also because you want to impress other people. But I hate that because if your identity... So don't say, I am. Okay? I try to avoid that. When I talk to people, I don't say, hi, I am an entrepreneur. The word am assumes that that is all who you are. So instead of saying, I am an entrepreneur, I'd say, hi, I work as an entrepreneur just so I can put it into another basket because it's just one part of who I am. If you happen to be a mother or let's say you're a mother and you're an accountant, please do not introduce yourself as, hi, my name is Joanna. I'm an accountant. Say something else and say, hi, I'm Joanna. I'm a mother. I love watching Netflix. I've been to 20 countries. I make a fierce adobo for dinner. I have two amazing kids. Because I want you to tell yourself and to others that you are a multi-dimensional person. You are not defined by what you do in the office. And if ever you fail in your job, you didn't get promoted, you got fired, whatever it is, you know that your worth as a person is beyond that job. You got other baskets to lean onto. That, I'd like to think, is what the art of motivation is all about. And this is why it is your utmost responsibility to identify the sources of motivation. This is not something that people are going to decide for you. It has to be you who will identify it. And over time, when you're 16 years old, it might change when you're 30. It might change when you're 40. It might change when you're 70 years old, for example. Okay. Oh, Hola from TikTok is asking this question. Thank you for this question, by the way. Any thoughts about being too emotionally invested at work? I'm going to use the word passion for being emotionally invested at work. Passion meaning you go the extra mile. You care about the project such that even if it's not anymore under your metrics, you're still going to ask questions in a meeting. You're still going to ask people to beat the deadline, etc. But just like in life, moderation is important. You cannot be too invested to the point that other people are perceiving you as, ah, even if I don't do my job, Jonathan is going to be there anyway. So I'm going to be lackluster with my performance because he's going to save the day. That, I think, is the biggest disadvantage with being the most passionate person in the team. People will always think na sasaluhin mo. You're going to be the messiah. And so it makes other team members slack off. And it becomes a cycle. Why? When other team members become slackers and their performance goes down, you get disappointed with their performance because you think that you're the only one who's carrying the entire weight. And it becomes a cycle because they're not performing well, which makes you disappointed. you disappointed because they're not performing well, and so on and so forth. Okay? I think you can be passionate but you have to put a certain line. A line such as, for example, if someone is not doing their job because they're always passing on to you, I think there are moments in your career that you have to let that person make that mistake. Let them fall. 
Can I get an exclamation mark? <laughs> if you guys can relate. Let them fall. If you think that the mistake is going to be manageable, the risk is not too big. Okay? But it's still going to be painful. And sometimes I agree, sometimes the risk will also fall back onto you, which means you're going to incur some pain. But as long as you think it's manageable and you can easily bounce back, let them fall. Why? They have to sometimes learn from this mistake and pain because they have to realize that you're not going to be there all the time for them. And that they have to learn how to stand up on their own. I've met so many teammates like this when I was in the corporate world and I hated these kinds of teammates. You know, even in university or high school, there are already people like this. They end up relying only on one person to do the book report, to do the group report. And so they end up graduating from school thinking they just need to look for that passionate person who's the overperformer, who's the super, uh, the eager beaver, and I'm going to ride on their performance so I can have a better, easier life for myself. Okay? You have to let them fall. You need to reserve giving that second chance to someone else who deserves it. Okay? Yes. I think it's going to be a painful statement, but I've learned from my mistakes as well. If you keep on carrying each and everyone's weight in your team, you will eventually drown. And they're the ones, you know, up there floating because you've been pushing them upwards all the time. So thank you for that question. Luis Perez. Okay. Curious question that I'd like to answer. When is the right time to move out of my family house? First, I don't think you should be influenced solely by culture. A lot of us move out of the house because we think all of my friends are moving out of the house. I should also move out of my own house. Okay, I disagree with that. I think you should only move if you think you need your space. And if you think that it's for your own ability, it will help you improve, become more independent. I moved out of my parents' house when I was 21 years old. I was working for two years already, but I needed some space only because I felt that I wanted to do things on my own. I wanted some peace and quiet every time I had to do some work. I also wanted to bring some friends in my own apartment. I also felt that if I stayed at home, I will not be able to learn how to cook. I will not be able to learn how to do my own laundry. Because in Asia, our parents always pamper us too much to the point that a lot of us don't know how to do these things even when we've already grown up. So I moved. This is not to say that 21 should be the best time. Some people move earlier. Some people move later. I don't think it's bad if you stay in your house. Some people stay in their parents' house until they're 30 or 35 years old. I think sometimes it becomes the source of happiness for some parents because they don't become empty nests. And that is a phenomenon a lot of parents are scared of. They don't want to have an empty nest. They don't want to shower their love only to pet dogs eventually. Okay, So it depends. If you think that you need it for your own good, I'd say go. After you've earned and saved some money from your corporate job and you can do things on your own, okay, then go. Okay, Art Neil on Facebook is asking, I'm losing my motivation from work, but it's not enough reason to quit as I have bills to pay. I feel like I'm not fit or the right person for the role. I have been a supervisor for nearly four years, but until now, I don't think that I should stay in this role. I feel like I'm managing or leading people that is not my forte, not my strengths. Because I hate conflicts and I easily get distracted if my team isn't doing well. Honestly, I don't even know what to do. So address this. Okay. Um, okay. Artniel, this, this is a bit complicated. So you want to quit because you don't think you're fit for the role, which means you're also disengaged. Likely is going to be a reason for you to not perform and be in your best shape because you don't like the job. Okay. But you're also telling me that you can't just easily quit because you have bills to pay. 
the first thing that comes into my mind is obviously your best option is to look for a different role or a position that will make you happier and that you think you're fit for it. But you might want to consider as early as now to start floating your resumes, start floating your CVs, because you don't want to quit immediately now and be unemployed for a few months. Okay, So this is under the assumption that one of the best options for you is to quit and look for a better job. So I want you to buy two to three months hunting for that job while you are still in your current job. You have to be proactive in doing job interviews. You have to be proactive in submitting your resumes. And hey, these days we are in a better place because a lot of companies are now allowing job interviews via Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Gone are the days when a lot of companies are requiring you to be physically present. I remember, I will not mention what company I did this to, but I remembered there were times where I left my my office during lunchtime, went back at 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon because I scheduled a job interview at 1 o'clock p.m. So I was sneaking out. I felt guilty doing it when I was younger. These days, you don't need to do that anymore. So option number one is that if you really need to look for a different job that's going to make you happy at the end of the day, you have to buy time. But you cannot quit now because that's going to endanger your savings. That's going to endanger your financial status. Okay. Uh, option number two is, can I ask, by the way, Art Neil, how long have you been in this job? I would assume that you've only been here recently because you're only saying that you don't like this recently. Can I just push you to stay a bit longer, like four months, six months? Because in the beginning, there are going to be jobs that you don't like. You don't like the people, you don't like the role, but the moment you get the hang of it, I think there are months that you will just have that magic switch. That switch we're in, hey, I think I'm starting to appreciate this. I think I'm starting to know this. Even if there's conflict, I think I'm starting to be able to shrug my shoulders for it. Stay for a bit and ask yourself if you have exhausted all the possible scenarios and if those scenarios continue to irritate you. Okay? Then that's the best time to say, okay, I've given my best. I've given my all. I think I should really quit. Okay? The third option, which is going to be the most painful, is speaking of motivation, do not draw your attention, therefore, on the job. Draw your attention on the prize. And that is, if this job happens to be a very financially rewarding job, focus on the idea that even if you may not hate it, you may not love it, and that you hate it so much, you need it because it's what's going to be best for your family and for your future. Now, I would say that the third one is not going to be sustainable. Maybe this will help you continue for one more year or two years, okay? But it will buy you time, okay? So motivation, as I said, is multifaceted. Do not put your motivation into my job because it defines me. My job does not define me, but the money I get from my job can help me redefine what I like in life. A good house, being able to eat out, being able to travel, being able to share my blessings with others. You can refocus. Again, easier said than done, but refocusing towards a different motivation while you're still in a job that you don't like, meaning you keep on dancing even if you don't like the music, can work. Okay, Art Neil, I hope I was able to answer your question. I also don't think I'm giving justice, giving you tips in a three-minute conversation. So maybe you can send me a private message and we can talk about it further. Gab from TikTok says, I cannot climb the corporate ladder and I'm stuck as a manager because I don't have a diploma. I feel demotivated. Okay, Gab from TikTok, are you telling me that it's because your company is requiring you to have a certain degree in order for you to be legit? Promoted? Is that it? Okay. I okay. I rarely see these companies. I've never met one. I do agree that there are recruiters who require you to have a college degree or a diploma. But can I also tell you that there are many companies these days that do not even require a diploma anymore? Can I get an exclamation mark? Gladiators and suits. So to give an example, Silicon Valley companies, Facebook. Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Airbnb, 
grab most of these companies. And again, easier said than done because these are bigger companies. They don't require you to have a college degree or diploma for the same reason that their founders did not finish school. So here's option number one. If at some point you get tired of this company, please know that there are lots and lots of companies out there who are willing to take on people based on their experience, not on their diploma. Okay, that's one. Number two, if you want to stay in your same company, can I ask you to do a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your HR and with your manager and tell them, if I really cannot get a diploma right now, is there anything else that I can do so I can be promoted in the organization? Can I just base it instead on metrics in terms of my performance? Okay, Here's my take. If the company says no and, say, and flat out says, nope, sorry, we are truly going to promote only people who are deserving because they have a degree, for me, it's a red flag. For me, it is a company that will forever not value your performance because they're basing it on paper, not on real life. Okay. Okay. Vodge from TikTok. I just resigned and my boss wanted to counter offer. Any thoughts? I don't think that I don't think that there is any amount of money that will replace your peace of mind for what costs you to want to leave. If your reason for leaving is because you have a toxic boss, a toxic culture, I don't think that increasing your salary will change that because the root cause is not going to be modified by an, a higher salary. Perhaps if you're going to give me 1 million pesos additional, sure, I'm going to stay because that's ridiculously a good amount of money. But if we're talking about counter offers such as, can I increase it by 5,000, maybe 10,000? I don't think it's good enough. Can I get another exclamation mark if you guys agree? I don't think you can buy peace of mind if that was the reason why you wanted to quit, okay? If you can, and this is very rare, I just want to highlight, very, very not usually happening. If someone asks me to go back to the company and give me a counter offer, I will tell them, I want to negotiate. If I'm going to go back, I need the following changes. Number one, I need to be moved to a different department. Number two, I want my workload to be X, Y, and Z. Of course, ask concessions that are fair. And the reason why I wanted to negotiate in kind, not just in cash, is because if the very reasons why you wanted to quit were not at all addressed, you're going to end up having the same problem as well. Okay? So you just went back to the same cycle. For what? 100 US dollars? Okay? For what? 500 ringgit? That's not worth it. Okay? Your happiness more than anything else, should be able to determine the career path that you want later in life. Okay? Okay, someone's asking another the topic for tonight. The topic tonight is losing your motivation in your job. Uh, Safwa says, I like what you said, that money is not my motivation, but the things that I can do about the money, like travel. You know, I disagree when someone says money doesn't make you happy. I will, I will modify that statement and say money does not make me happy. Money will not make you happy. Sorry, money will solve all of your problems in life. When someone says that, I will say not all the time. Money, however, can give you happiness indirectly. What do I mean? People say money cannot give you a good night's sleep because it's not just about having a nice bed. But if your issue is conflict with a boss and money was not an issue, you can just quit your job because you can afford to be unemployed for a few months. So money indirectly was part of the problem. Okay, right? Or when people say, you, even if you have all the money in the world, but you don't have friends, you will still be sad and you will still be dissatisfied. 
technically, yes, but I think if you have a good amount of money and it allows you to travel the world, it allows you to go to a place where you can find new friends, and it allows you to have a good amount of money, thereby giving you a good amount of power to be able to choose friends based on perhaps the same socioeconomic status, same hobbies or same likes. Let's say you're a millionaire and you were able to find friends who have the same hobby of cars or collectibles, whatever it is. I think that's happiness. Okay, So technically, money can give you a level of happiness. Okay. Uh, Rai Rai from Facebook. Okay, let's answer this question. It's a very good one. What advice will you tell a late 20s professional who's still trying to figure out what's next for their career? Is it still valid to say that each one of us has his or her timeline? Yes, I agree. While I am a believer that the earlier you do it in life, the more advantage you have, I'm also a believer that everyone is like a flower. We all bloom according to certain timeline. So think of it like this. You're, on a, you're in a race. Let's say you're in a 500-meter race. A 500-meter race has exactly the same texture of the floor. It has the same environment and also the same distance. It's 500 meters, which means you can really say that someone is ahead of you or someone is at your back. Can I get an exclamation mark if we're all clear with that? That is called a race, okay? This is not the same situation for our careers because even if you tell me that she got promoted faster and we're in the same company, please remember that you are not facing the same circumstances. She probably got promoted faster. Why? Because she doesn't have family problems. She is single. She perhaps has more money that allows her to buy food whenever she's stressed. She has an amazing balcony that she's able to view whenever she gets stressed in her home. Okay? What if you don't have these things? So you cannot say that you're in front or at the back of the person because you are not running the same race. You have different circumstances in life. So just like any flower, we all bloom according to our time, according to our abilities, according to what we want to envision at the end of the day. Can I get an exclamation mark if that is clear? I need to say that because I think we've gone to a point where in, and don't, again, don't get me wrong, I will always say that you have to compare yourself versus others. Okay? Relatively, comparison is still important because comparison allows you to understand benchmarks. Okay? When you just keep on staying inside your house, you will end up thinking that you're the most handsome or beautiful person in the world. And when you step outside of the house, you realize, gosh, there are other people way more good looking than I am. So somehow, comparison still is important if you want to become the best of the best. Okay? But do not take it against yourself 100% because not all circumstances in your life are controllable. Okay? So if someone got promoted faster, if someone was able to live a better life, okay, someone can be promoted in her 20s and ends up getting cancer in their 30s. And so their race ends quicker. You didn't get promoted in your 20s. You only got promoted until your 30s and 40s, but you were able to live your life until you're 80 years old. Can really someone say that your race or their race was better than yours? Can I get an exclamation mark? Do we see that logic? So yes, okay? Of course, if you're telling me that I think you're implying, Rai Rai, can I switch my lanes? Can I, can I change my career? Can I move to a different company? You can all the time. But remember, there are, are going to be certain restrictions. If you have been in the same job and same position for the past 25 years, ultimately, naturally, it's going to be hard for you to switch to a different industry because everyone is going to say that you don't have enough knowledge about the new industry that you are entering. 
Okay? So those are the non-negotiables of life. So I just want to make it clear, not everything is cast in stone as if everything is flexible. Okay? Again, moderation is important. Okay, I have forgotten giving our prizes now. So may I request our folks, gladiators in suits, could you please give me a letter P as in prize if you guys are all cool to receive prizes now. I'm going to be asking a question and we're going to be giving you tickets to our upcoming workshops. The first ticket that I want to give away is our new session that is happening on June 24. Okay, I'm going to show it now on the screen for our Facebook folks. Okay, This is going to happen on June 24. 5.30 in the afternoon until 7 o'clock in the evening. This is for one night only. I've never done this before because we only do it for private companies. I've never done one publicly. So we realize that you know there's a demand for it. Let's do it. So we're doing a motivational talk. The talk is called Everything Will Be All Right at the SMX Convention Center in SM Aura, Fort BGC. June 24, 5.30 to 7 p.m. We made it as a Saturday so that you can, guys can come uh, in case you have a very busy week for work. I want to give away 10 free tickets. 10 free tickets. Uh, three tickets per platform, but because we love our folks on TikTok who have been giving us 7,000 likes so far, we're going to give you five free tickets for our winners. Okay? Is that cool? I hope that's cool. Again, June 24, everything will be all right. It's a motivational power talk by yours truly for one and a half hour. It's all about career. It's all about being able to give the best version of yourself. Okay, so give me a category just so we can decide what question will I give. We always want trivia questions. Let's do this. Give me a trivia category. Jani on TikTok says culture, okay? Puede. We can do that. By the way, I'm sorry for other folks. If you're not in Manila, unfortunately, I cannot give you the prize. Uh, this is only for folks who are able to attend the session physically because it's an on-site session. Okay, Yvonne says history. Puede. Uh, what can I give? I want to give a trivia that Hopefully, it's also life changing. I can be nerd, no? Or, oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I know this now. I think I know this now. Okay. Let me talk about health. Can I get the letter H if health is a good category to ask uh, about? No limit. <laughs> no, man. Not everyone gets to understand. That. Okay. Health. Okay. So. If you guys are watching my TikTok videos and videos on and my reels on Facebook, you probably will know the answer here. So here's the question. When you happen to be young, your brain is only starting to develop and unfortunately is not yet fully mature. So here's the catch. When you're young, you tend to be more selfish. When you're young, you tend to think about what's only good for you. You don't think of what's good for others or what's good for the greater good of the society. You don't have a tendency to think like that. And that's because the part of the brain that's more rational, okay? The part of the brain that's more rational, and that is your prefrontal cortex, unfortunately, is not yet fully developed, okay? So the prefrontal cortex is responsible for rational thinking. It's responsible for disciplining yourself, okay? So while that is not developing, especially when you're in your toddler and teenage years, while that is not yet developing, another part of your brain is more dominant. Okay, And this part of the brain is responsible for animal instincts, emotions, passion. Okay, And so unfortunately, that is the reason why when we are younger, we tend to think about only what's good for us. This is why millennials and Gen Z, when they enter an office or become part of a company, sometimes they all think of, what's the commission? What's my salary? Should I get promoted? But when you get older and wiser, you become more mature, you tend to think of, how will my action impact the other employees? 
How will this be good for the future generations of the organization? So you tend to think of others. Okay? That's because the prefrontal cortex is more developed. Question, what do you call that part of the brain that takes place, becomes more dominant while the prefrontal cortex is not yet fully developed? Okay? Is this a hard question? Yes, it is. But I think it's a very good information. If you happen to be a leader or manager, when I discovered this piece of information, I became more forgiving of younger employees. I became more forgiving of teenagers. Teenagers are not stupid. Teenagers are not selfish all the time. They're not irrational or entitled. They just happen to have not yet fully developed prefrontal cortex. Okay? Okay? So, I am already seeing some correct answers in the chat box. If you guys are ready, woo, okay, okay, okay. I think I've I've explained it too long. Okay. So it gave a lot of people time. The correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, is the amygdala. Okay. It's the amygdala. It's responsible for all animal instincts, getting hungry. You know, you're uh you can't afford to wait to eat. You always cry when you can't get what you want, for example. That's the amygdala. So let me call out first our winners on our Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay. On YouTube, cup of tea, amygdala. You got it right. Congratulations. Yvonne also got the correct answer for amygdala. Mabel Casiple also got it right on YouTube. Congratulations. GJ Ad sorry, JG Adorna also got it right on Facebook. Domingo Osabel on YouTube also got it right, Amygdala. Okay. On LinkedIn, Alvin John also got it right, Amygdala. My last winner on LinkedIn is Christine Derial, also Amygdala. Congratulations. Let's give an exclamation mark for our winners. If you got it right, please, and if I called your name, send me a message, a private message, so I can give you instructions on how to claim your prize, okay? Now, let's go to my favorite crowd, TikTok folks, okay? TikTok folks, are you guys ready for this? Let's call out the names of the winners. First winner on TikTok is, again, the correct answer is Amygdala. First one is Ulap. Congratulations. Second one is Rezel. R-E-I-Z-E-L-L-E. -E -E. Congratulations. Third winner. And daming cerebrum, huh? Okay. You're close. Almost there. Okay. Third winner is Independent Babe Finds. Congratulations. Fourth winner is RB Del Mundo. Congratulations. And fifth winner is Archie Gomez 175. Congratulations to our winners. Let's give everyone a uh, an exclamation mark. I want to see you guys in our upcoming session again, June 24, 5.30 to 7 p.m. So I'd like to describe that the session is a motivational talk, but because I also love cracking jokes, I'd love to think it's a stand-up comedy as well, sitcom, but we're going to be spending also 30 minutes for a Q&A. So I would love to collect a lot of questions about your career in this session. And it's going to be a very intimate discussion on sharing each other's thoughts about success. Okay? That is everything will be all right. All the participants can get a free copy of the ebook. Everything will be all right. The ticket, our introductory price, because it's our first ever to do this, is only $499. The book itself is already $2.99, so you guys are getting a very good deal out of this. And part of the proceeds of our sales go to the scholars of St. Joseph's Academy in Malinao, Aklan, where my parents come from. Okay? All good? Yes? Let's continue now. Let's. I think we can answer three more questions for today's session. Is that okay? Let's answer three more. I sorry, I forgot. I forgot to mention this. Do the winners get to bring a plus one? Okay. Do the winners get to bring a plus one? Because 
it's going to be lonely if you attend alone, right? And the answer is yes. Each winner gets to bring a plus one. So we're very happy to extend that, okay? Bring a date. Why not? Bring your mom, right? If you happen to be a boss, bring your direct report who probably needs motivation. We guarantee it's going to be an amazing night, okay? It's going to be at the SMX Convention Center in Fort BGC. Hey, it's in Fort BGC, Saturday night. After we finish the talk, you can go all out and explore the rest of BGC because it's an amazing, it has an amazing nightlife. Okay? And if you guys happen to be interested and you didn't win a ticket, we'd like to invite you to go to our website, jonathanyabut.com. Registrations are going to be opened tomorrow. jonathanyabut.com. Okay. Come on, let's. Could you please cut and paste your questions again? Because I've lost them now. They've all been buried with all the chats here. Let's do last three questions for our uh, session for tonight. Ah, oh, Saberoni Yvonne from Facebook. Sino single Jan? If there is anyone who's single, she's gonna tag you along as her plus one. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's. I need to cover a question now. So this is from Telma. The question from Telma from Facebook is, what should you do if you feel low motivated because some people are power tripping at work because they know that they are ahead and are more experienced than you? I'm going to answer this in three ways. The first one is the Jonathan Yabut style. And I need to make a disclaimer because that's who I am. And therefore, it may not be applicable for other situation. But you might want to try it out. And my style would be, I'm going to shrug it off. I'm going to shrug it off in a sense that if they keep on bullying me, and if they keep on power tripping, I will still get the job done, knowing that I'm amazing. And sometimes, just simply being amazing in what you do is going to serve as your immunity at some point. If the power tripping goes to a point wherein it can be a cause for abuse, negligence of their job, or any civil or criminal act, I'm going to report it to HR. And I will be brave to say it simply because there's no other way to stop bullies but to call them out. Because if you keep on letting them do it, it empowers them further to believe that they can do it to anyone else. Can I get an exclamation mark if you agree with that? Okay. The reason why bullies become more powerful is because people keep on submitting their power to them, thinking that they can get away with it. I'm going to call them out. Okay. I'm going to call them out. I'm going to report it to their manager. I'm going to report it to the manager of the manager. And I understand sometimes it will stir the pot. Sometimes it will inflict conflicts. I don't care. I know I am doing so well in what I do. I am an extremely talented person. I need to say it because I'm in the right place to say it. Okay? So that's one. Number two route, which might be awkward and painful, is sometimes confrontation can help. Invite this person for a one-on-one -on -one meeting and ask them, can I just ask what your motivations are for doing this? Is there something that's bugging you? And sometimes you want to remind them, you know, sometimes people who bully are people who are in pain. Maybe I can help. Is there something that makes you struggle these days? It could be something from your home. Do you have an issue with someone in a relationship, for example? And I believe this. When people are... How, do, how can I choose the word? When people treat others bad... It's because they are deflecting the same experience that they're probably feeling from others. Right? I am a believer that sometimes people who have been victims of violence, in order for them to feel vengeance, they pass on that violence onto others, unfortunately. So sometimes, you know, bullies were people who were also bullied in their younger years. And now they enjoy the power tripping because finally they feel that they are compensating for what they have lost in the past. Do you guys agree? That's one. I would confront this person. 
and I will tell them how I feel and I will make them feel, you know, I will tell them things such as, if this was happening to your mom, if this was happening to your kid, do you think that they will also enjoy the same treatment? Okay. Sometimes confrontation, a heart to heart talk is going to help. Okay. The third, okay, third, this is more of perspective taking. The third technique will be I'm going to ask three to five friends in the office who are close to me and who know me well. And I'm going to ask them, is my perspective of being bullied or being a victim of power tripping accurate? Why is that? Sometimes we often label ourselves as victims because sometimes we end up exaggerating how people treat us. Is the person really power tripping or is the person just being strict? Do they just happen to have high standards about excellence? So maybe, and this is, this is not me saying that you are this person because I have also have experienced these people. Maybe you're slacking off. Maybe you're not meeting deadlines and reports. Maybe you're not performing to your best version. And so when someone calls you out, you label them immediately as a power tripper when in fact, they're just doing their job. Can I get an exclamation mark if you can relate to that? So sometimes you have to look at yourself in the mirror or I'm going to ask a friend and say, hey, I feel this way whenever this person does this to me. Is this a fair feeling? Is it normal to feel like a victim? Okay. Sometimes you need to have you need to have a sounding board because we're often gonna be biased towards ourselves. Okay. Nikki from LinkedIn. You know, Nikki, you always give me good questions. So thank you for that. Does our education match industry standards as some graduating folks become demotivated because of the job standards are very high in the Philippines. I so agree. You're just applying for a cashier position and they want you to be an accountancy graduate. It's ridiculous. Okay. Continuing, also they are having a hard time to find the right career for them. I agree. I think that there are a lot of jobs in the Philippines that do not require a four-year degree course that a vocational degree should suffice, such that it would have helped them if they didn't need to spend that amount of money for tuition, they didn't need to waste extra two years of their life, if their ultimate goal anyway is to fulfill this specific job. It's a two-way street. I think we also have to fault not just the education system, but also the employers. There are a lot of employers who because they are lazy to scrutinize applicants to make it easy for them, they're going to impose high standards just so that they can filter applicants easily. Four-year degree course, five years worth of experience, and you're only asking for a job that doesn't need all of these things, unfortunately. It is true. A lot of people will therefore be demotivated. The effect of this is that a lot of graduates feel that they will never be enough for the system. Okay? So thank you, Nikki, for making me rant, which is the reason, again, why I want to serve. <laughs> that is, I, I've mentioned this one of my sessions before. One of my ambitions and dreams when I'm 45 years old or 50 years old is if I can be the department uh, the secretary for the Department of Education. Because I want to fix a lot of things in that organization. Okay. Okay, JVC is asking, I was doing my job great in the eyes of my division director and vice president, and now they are thinking about me participating in an AI-based project initiative. Problem is, I am not yet certified to take that path, but I'm confident I can do it. Should I say yes or should I say no? Okay. First, I don't think all AI roles need certification. Number two, if ever you need AI certification, then ask for it. Ask your division director and your vice president. I would love to say yes, but I also need your support. If you have an amazing team in a company, they will give this to you. 
because they should never let you swim alone. They should be able to support you, set you up for success. Okay? Number three, most of the time, we become excellent in our job as we do it over the years. We call this as learning by doing. The more you do the job, the more you get better at it. It's not because you read textbooks. It's not because you watched a YouTube video. It's not because you watched a TikTok live with Jonathan Yabut here. It's because you kept on doing the job for many years. So I would say yes and sort it out later on. As long as you have the fundamentals intact, which I think you have, because a lot of people said that you are good, then you should be able to get by with the job, even if there are a lot of revisions, a lot of learning curve that's going to happen. Okay, when are we going to have another book sale? I cannot say that. Why? Because if I say, then there's no point of doing a sale, okay? But I'll give you a hint. We usually do it once a month or once every two months. I'll give you another hint. We do it usually, <laughs> if I'm saying this, I'm just going to say it. We do it when people have the most money, okay? So I hope you, get a, you have an idea. When do we do our book sale? Okay. Speaking of which, can I just plug that now? Gladiators in suits. If a lot of people on TikTok don't know us uh, that much, I think a lot of you have only been discovering us recently, but I've been doing this for almost a decade now. If you haven't yet gotten copies, please do. Our best selling books are available in all leading bookstores in the Philippines. If in Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia, we're also available in other bookstores like Kino Konia and MPH. That's from Grit to Great. We have Fast Forward. We have Single, Taken, or Building My Empire, the book where I was brokenhearted. And then I have here, fourth book, latest one, which is about the hybrid post-pandemic world. Also has lots of lessons about leadership. Everything will be all right. All of our books are about career management, being the best version of who you are. Okay? They're also available in Lazada and Shopee, by the way. Just go to our official store. Okay? Please be aware that there are a lot of fake books. Somehow that makes me feel flattered because our books are being copied, but it's not good for our business as well. But there are a lot of fake books. You will have an idea that it's a fake book because the inner pages are photocopied, meaning the pages are not premium quality. Okay, like They're just like white bond paper. And we've seen them in the market recently. So you have to go to our official Lazada or Shopee site. Go to official Jonathan Yabut page. Or if you want to be sure, go to National Bookstore, go to Fully Booked. Our copies are also available there. Okay, let's... Uh, someone's asking, do you send a PM here on TikTok for the winners? Yes, send me a private message on TikTok if you happen to win a ticket. Ooh, okay. Last two questions. April Villegas, how to break it to a subordinate that she is not meeting my standards when she always compares me to being strict compared to other supervisors. Okay, number one, if you are disappointed at someone, the disappointment must have a basis. The disappointment must be based on a certain criteria. So I'm not sure if you have it in your company, but you need to have it. What are the metrics that the person needs to meet? When I say metrics, sales targets, Promptness and submission of reports, satisfaction of recipients of reports, etc. Usually, these are metrics that are counted. You have numbers 120% sales achievement. If it's budget allocation or submission of report, 100% submission on time. Such that at the start of the year, you need to be able to declare what are all these metrics. Meaning, if this was like a beauty pageant, they are aware of the criteria for judging. Diba? Kapag may beauty pageant, you usually have audience impact, swimsuit competition, evening gown competition, interview, and there is a number attached to it. Okay, Employees, especially who work in the best organizations, the multinational companies, right, do have a metric system. They are measured and evaluated according to those statistics. You need to show this to your subordinate so that every time you tell them that you're disappointed, it's not because it's subjective. It's not because you had a bad mood. It's not because it's a Monday morning. It's because according to the standards, 
you're not meeting it. This way, they will find you objective. Okay? And you also have to explain to them, this criteria is the same criteria used by the other managers. Okay? Most of the time, employees who complain like this, it's because they do not know what the metrics are to begin with. And I need to say this, I am so disappointed that there are other organizations out there who have zero, zero evaluation criteria for their employees. Can I get an exclamation mark? If you have seen, you don't need to work for one, but if you've seen one, I have met these people. I have met these companies. Sad to say, a lot of them are in government agencies. Sad to say, a lot of them are in family-owned businesses, small, medium enterprises. Okay? I don't want to badmouth, but I've met a lot of business owners who also happen to be the owner, and therefore they are the HR, and they don't measure their employees. Again, let's be, let's be objective here. If your employee is a contractual, meaning they are not up for promotion, they are on a fixed term, and they are a freelancer, for example, then fine. They don't need to be evaluated because their projects just have a certain point. But if they are full-time employees with employee contracts, eligible for benefits, for insurance, for promotions, for career progression, you need to impose this on them. May jowa na po ba kayo? Wala pa po. <laughs> I'm gonna send you an application form if you guys want. Okay. Um, ooh. Okay. Mr. Ware, PH, says this. How about if the organizational chart changes every quarter? Grabe yun, Every quarter is too frequent. And then people expect a great result. I can understand. What do you think about that, Jonathan? Number one, I don't think, I'm not going to be surprised if you are demotivated in your job because if you keep on changing roles, positions, and scope of work, you really are going to feel confused about your job. Plus, you're not going to see consistency if someone is excelling well in their job because if you're only measuring them for two months and three months, they will not be able to prove themselves right. Okay? So my request, if you have the power, confront the managers, confront the leaders. Tell them that while change is good, it should not be as frequent like this. And sometimes companies do it for the sake of making it look like that they are changing. Okay. Okay. Gladiators in suits. I I need to end this now because it's way past beyond my dog's walking time. We need to go out in a while. I need to walk him on the streets. I'm going to be online tomorrow again, okay? So I hope we get to see you at 9 o'clock in the evening, same time, same place. We're going to be talking about, I think I enjoy this topic so far. So let's do a part two of motivation. Is that cool? Can I get an exclamation mark? Is it okay with you guys? Let's continue our discussion about motivation because I think we've got some unfinished business from a lot of folks who are demotivated. And we're here to help you be more motivated. Okay? So we hope to see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Go to our website if you'd like to learn more about what we do. We do private engagements for companies. We do public workshops. We also do online courses if you can't afford to be on site because you got no time. Okay? JonathanYabut.com. And please, if you'd like to listen more about what we do and what tips we can offer, please listen to, listen on our, how do you call this? Catch us on Spotify. Our podcast is called From Grit to Great. We're now on season two. Uh, season three is happening soon. I promise you that. It's going to happen this year. Season three is happening and please give us reviews and rank and ratings. That's the only way for us to be able to improve our ranking on Spotify as well. Anong oras po kayo natutulog, sir? Usually 12 a.m. or 11.30. Okay? Thank you, Gladiation Suits. See you. Stay safe. And be always aspire for a better version of yourself. Bye, guys.